hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Shadowrun Dragonfall. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today uh, as we explore the... I don't remember the name of this place, but it is a place where uh, we're going to get... Well, we have a bunch of quests, actually, to, before we get to Apex um, and uh, try to kill this this uh, murderous AI that is basically a special assassin for the Matrix, and uh, hopefully we don't die in the process. Certainly, hopefully, we don't die before that, or at all. The man behind the counter looks tired. His lids, eyelids, are heavy, and his eyes are bloodshot. Welcome to Carl's General Store. What can I do for you? I need some info? He rubs his eyes and does his best to shake himself awake. Yeah, alright. Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, what's the layout of this place like? He pauses for a moment, gathering his thoughts, and when the words come, they're slow as molasses. Well, you're on the first floor, that's the hub on and my shop. The um, second floor has mostly been converted into makeshift apartments for people to live in. A gang squats up there. The Magnificers? Dangerous people, I'd stay away from him. The third floor is mostly housing too. Lots of Parsons, uh, Parsons community crazy live up there. The um, Magnificers have a squad up there too. He's, he leans in and lowers his voice to a conspiratorial whisper. I'm pretty sure their main crib is up there, too. Don't know exactly where. Huh. What do you know about the Magnificers? They don't care about much, uh, aside from their own magic. Whole world's one big magical pissing contest to them. Always trying to summon bigger and better spirits. Dangerous stuff, man. Must be tough, having to live down here with all that going on over your head. It ain't easy. They charge less in protection than the Al Arbiters did, but they don't care about keeping anything even approaching order. They just hide out in their clubhouse, get high, and summon spirits that terrorize and kill people on the third floor. Eh, poor bastards. What do you know about the Arbiters? Bunch of tough guys. I took a big cut of my sales in protection money, all in the name of the working class. Funny. Last time I checked, I was one of the working class. In fact, I'm the only one who's working in this whole damn building. He spreads his arms, a helpless look on his face. But at least they kept some form of law. Mugging and assaults were rare, and they didn't let murderous spirits run loose on the upper floors. So, you know, you take the good with the bad. Yes, I would take... <laughs> I mean, in the setting and in this, this quest, he's actually totally right, and this is not... This is not, um, like, it, it's it's funny because it's written definitely as a sort of jape. It, I mean, it isn't. He is not joking. He's absolutely being serious when he says that the arbiters or whatever uh, don't let murderous spirits run loose. But it just sounds funny. It's just like, well, at least they didn't... <laughs> It didn't make all the murder ghosts appear. Uh, well, uh, that's all I need, the info I need, I suppose. Uh, can I look at your inventory? Yes, I can. And we have a lot of things, which makes me... Ooh, which makes me think... That I'll need to come back here to restock. Considering how... Well, I won't, because I'm a, a cheapskate and I uh, I don't use things. Look at that, it's two, two of the same item right next to each other. Because they just drew the parts without with the T gone and just put it one after the other. Huh. That's why. Instead of drawing a set of two, because, you know, you can reuse multiple things. Either way, we have an elevator over here. This elevator appears to be offline. The control panel's LCD screen is unlit and its metal casing is badly dented. Uh, I'm going to ask my decker to examine the control panel. Your decker easily pries the metal casing away from the wall, exposing a mess of wires and circuitry. After a quick inspection, it becomes clear that this elevator is wired to operate around a control chip. The chip is missing, and it looks as though a power coupling has been yanked alongside it. Without these components, there is no way for this elevator to function. Huh. That's not a correct explanation of what... I mean, it, it is a correct explanation, as in, like, this is not what a decker would say. Is what I'm saying. Well, this is not what a mildly technically inclined person would say. You don't wire... I mean, you definitely wire something to work around a control ship. But that just makes it easier to hack. Well, not necessarily not all the time. But what a control ship does... You have to think of, of uh, wires as simple... It's just simple connections. It's, it's, it's what wires are. Wires are not smart, right? But the control ship itself is smart. So... 
for so for this to be difficult to hack, the control chip actually does more than control, or rather than communicate. So let's think about a normal door over here, right? This is the door, and you got the control chip over here. So what is actually communicated between those two things? What what is going on here? Um, well. It's pretty straightforward. So you have wires that are not smart. So either one of these things is smart or both of those things are smart or none of those things are smart. So if you have a, just a simple switch over here, it's not smart, it's just a switch. You s click on it and it sends a signal and this thing receives the signal and it's not smart either, just opens and that's it. So it's not, none of these are smart. If this control chip is smart, which is, is the case in this case, uh, then it doesn't matter what this thing is doing. Like you're clicking here, but maybe it's scanning your biometrics or maybe it's asking for a password, whatever it is, uh, which is likely the case in fact. Um, either way, the point is that it's not gonna send a signal because this thing is dumb. Uh, it's not gonna send a signal um, uh, unless like you pass the verification test and whatever. It's not a simple switch. It's asking for a password or whatever. So it's smart. And when it does pass the thing, it sends a signal. Now that signal, what is that signal? I need to ask that. That's very important because that's actually what's what, the thing that we want is that signal. It's not really the control chip. We don't care for the control chip. We care for the signal. Now, obviously, if this signal is uh, is not a simple turn it on, then this thing is being dumb. It's not going to work, right? Because it's dumb. It doesn't understand anything else. So you either uh, and dumb and smart is a um, um, it's, it's it's language that is used in electricity or te you know technical stuff. Uh, I'm not just calling names to to things. Uh, the point is, a simple signal of um, of a turn it on can be sent by the chip, but it also makes it easy for us to just, for example, send a signal this way. It could be, for example, a certain voltage. Uh, or or a simple actually powering the engine on because the power could be coming from here. Either way, the, the the signal itself can can be easily hacked. Now this thing is smart though. It's listening in on what the message comes from the control chip. So that means that if the control chip is missing, you need the message. It's like the password, but it's not written like that in here. It's saying that it's wired to operate around a control chip, and it doesn't say that it has another chip in here in this in this thing. It's specifically saying that it's wired around the control chip. If that is the case, that it sort of implies that this thing is just wires, which be, which means that all you need to do is send the current through the um, through the th through the wires. You just need to detect where the wires go. It's it's simple. So I'm saying, I mean, sending the current does require a specialized tool, though, because obviously you need power. Uh, you know. Anyway, it looks like both walls gave way and they took the roof with them. The entire ha ha hallway is blocked with debris. Um, yeah, you, you need a special special tool for sending sending a signal uh, current. Because the thing is, the voltage is probably going to be... You're probably going to fry the uh, chip on the other side if you send too much voltage. So you want to start very, very low. And you just want to go slowly up and uh, see what happens once you get to certain voltages. Which usually... If you're lucky, it works. If it doesn't, because it could also there could also be frequency, uh, so you could have voltages being filtered, and because uh, there those are two things. Uh, but if that's the case, a chip, a chip itself wouldn't be able to modulate frequency. In fact, yeah, it, well, I'm 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 going to technical details here, but the chip itself doesn't send voltage; it just controls things. So you don't even need to wonder what voltage is being sent over here. Voltage is basically the how much. It's not. It's complicated with the electricity. It's basically the the. Uh, uh, it's how much current is being sent. That's literally volta what voltage is. But it, anyway, it, it, the technicals, the technical details don't matter. What does matter is that the chip itself doesn't doesn't decide the voltage. It itself controls a MOFET or uh, what is actual? What is? I'm not. Sh it's a FET. It doesn't have to be MOF, uh, MO, MO type, which is. I don't actually know what that stands for. Either way, the is it MOFET or MOSFET? I think O is for state, so it's M-O-S-F-E-T, I believe that's how it works, and that thing is what controls the voltage. So the chip itself might control the, the, the depends, because either way, it doesn't matter, technical things, that's written by a non-technical person for a non-technical public, and I ramble about all the things, so welcome to my Let's Play. Um, It's episode 74, so you, you are well acqu acqu acquainted with my... Uh, well, uh, yeah. So let's go to the second floor. Well, actually, before before that, we're gonna step away from that door and we're gonna look at our objectives here specifically, because I, I was looking at them before. So we need to recover Parsons Terminal Part. We need to find a way into the basement, and we need to kill Trithemius. 
and uh, that's basically what we're gonna do. So Trithemius, if I remember correctly, was in the third floor, because we just learned that. Uh, but I would think second floor is where we're going. Uh, this seems like a symbol. Ah, uh, well, I don't know if it is a symbol of the um, of the arbiters. You'd think so, but since they're, they're they're not really too keen on their. Oh, good target practice. Who's that? Who's the who's the person? They're really upset with me, so please don't hit me again. Thank you. Okay, so. I am going to get to wherever I want. That is a mage up there. I'm not a big fan. So let's get a rabbit up, up there. Very nice. Let's activate my legs on you. Yes, activate the legs on you. Uh, that doesn't get me too close. What do I want to do? I want to see in there. Let's send you up there. This is for scouting purposes. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't get me too close. But that doesn't matter. So that is a mage. That is a mage. So these are, are Magnificers. We're in the right spot. Every one of them is a mage. Balls. Okay. Um, what can I... I need a, I need something back there. This is where Glory should come in. And actually, that's where you come in. Yeah, that's where uh, Dietrich... Dietrich has a thing that allows me to disable all of them at the same time. That would be kind of nice. Uh, the target loses their cover bonus for the rest of the turn. It's for a single target, though. Oh, right, this ability is really good. I only found it in later in the, uh, the first game. Uh, so, control mode most likely will do, but... I don't... Can I save midway through combat? I can. But the thing is, the thing with the control mode is that I might as well use it in there. You know what I mean? Because if I move... Happens, right? And then I go into control mode. And then... Max is here. Um, so, oh, right. That is the taser. Does action point damage. Okay. Uh, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay, do away with that. Can you please do away with that? You can't? No, no. That's not how it works. Mm, do you have line of sight? No, you have the wrong weapon. That's what you have. Um, I'm trying to... B I'm baiting them for, for damage, so it's not... It's not too bad to send people up here. Um, well, I'm trying to disable all of their... I'm try trying to disable them all. But the thing is, I am going to let that mage stay... Let's go for that conjurer over there. 8% 8, 8 chance to hit. There's a minus 2. Not great. Minus 4 is great, on the other hand. The healer is probably going to shoot at us. I'd rather that didn't happen. Then the conjurer is also a bit of a problem. Minus 2. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem, you see. It's uh, just... Yeah. So, let's do a taser here. 59... It actually landed on a minus four. That is brilliant. Uh, and that healer is just standing up, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we got snap fire, target two enemies, and uh, then open fire on both. That's cool. That's cool. I don't think I want to do that, but it only... Yeah, I remember getting that. Got a steady shot. Uh, let's go for a dead eye shot. 83. That's never going to crit, but it is doing damage. And... Uh, that's pretty good. I could try to go for a headshot, but that's not going to create cre anyway. So it doesn't matter. It's very important to know that. Oh, another shot. 19. Okay. Uh, she's wasting her. No, she's not. Oh, Ooh, she missed. This is brilliant. That way we have full health. Good. Uh, and uh, now you're going to die. Uh, maybe. Okay. Let's just take a two shot over there. Okay. Yeah, it's good. It's a good thing. Uh, let's go for a headshot. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, 72. That's a hit. Okay, so I want you. That's minus three action points. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I think I can move anywhere I want. I'm not 100% sure. Let's find out. 
Because that is a kill. We're definitely... Yeah, we can. Oh my god, that is so powerful. Those legs are unbelievable. Okay, that second one didn't take... Uh, didn't do our... Ar uh, Armor damage. Okay. Wow. That went swimmingly. And we got ourselves a Magnificer amulet. And we're collecting amulets. Wait a minute. Is there a special amulet for? Oh, there's a spell book up there as well. Uh, is there a spell, a special amulet for for the leader? Because the that was not the leader. What do we have here in the special book? Or a spell book. Uh, the most basic spell every mage knows and always has ready. It requires spell casting five. It's a power bolt three. Sent to my stash. Can't do anything else. Uh, the target cannot move, but can still use action points to attack. Uh, that's uh, glue. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. It's the. It's only a single level though. So it makes me think that, like, it's the it's the Grease spell from D&D, except not quite the same. No, no, yeah, in Grease you, you basically fall and you can't do anything if you fail a uh, reflex check or whatever. The door is locked. There is an intercom panel beside it. Your dagger pops the casing off the door control panel and quickly overrides the lock. The door unlocks with a click. And I don't ramble about technical details that matter to zero. Well, they, they don't necessarily matter to zero because, you know, it's... Cyberpunk. It's supposed to be... Well, it's not Cyberpunk the franchise. It's Cyberpunk the setting. It's supposed to be technically minded. You know, things like how BTLs work, or the... the, the uh, I mean, in, in the setting, there's magic and whatnot, so it's, it's, it's a lot more than just technical details. But the technical details are still there. We got a little bit of money there. We have the communion. Capital C speaks and we listen. Give yourself willingly. Join us and be... Uh, part of us, I suppose. I didn't read the last bit. You're gonna have to... Ooh, got some bliss over there. You're gonna have to uh, pause the video to know what that what that was. Maybe this is gonna say the same thing. The Communion Capital C must flourish. The Communion Capital C must grow. Okay, it's basically the same thing. Then we have a note over here. Cool, cool uh, things. On the dresser is a scrap of paper with, quote, shark tank, unquote, scribbled on it. Yeah, cool um, graffiti. What do we have over here? We are one through the capital C communion. Join us and we all will be one together. Uh, yeah, they, they came off as a cult for sure, but also I wonder if it is related to Apex because it would make thematic sense for it to be related to Apex instead of just being like a cool, weird thing. And if it isn't related to, Ape to Apex, I hope... There's a bunch of trash everywhere. If it isn't related to Apex, I hope at least we're going to be given a choice regarding whatever aspect of the mission is related to them. Because we're learning about a lot about the Communion. Hello. This is not where... Yes, this is not where I was supposed to go. Yes, it is not. It does. I was looking for a quest marker. There's no quest marker. There's just a bunch of junk. We have Edie. Yes, we do. You have friends as well. A group of metahumans huddles together, their eyes wide with terror. Many of them have scrapes and bruises, and a few have more serious injuries. Their clothes are tattered and stained. At your approach, a disheveled-looking middle... It's actually, it's not disheveled, it's disheveled, I believe. It's pronounced like that. I'm not sure, though. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would be, but English is weird. A disheveled-looking middle-aged man steps forward, placing himself between you and a, a, the main group. His gray hair is badly matted, and a pair of battered reading glasses hang from the... Hangs. It's a pair. It hangs from the bridge of his nose. Who are you, may I ask? And what are you doing here? I... I'm either your best friend or your worst nightmare. Up to you. Now, who are you? Then I would choose to be your friend. My name is Franz. These are my friends and my wife. We live together. Well, we used to live together up on the third floor. Uh, used to live upstairs? Yes, until about a week ago. Then the Magnificers' pets moved in, and we had to run for our lives. Spirits, you mean. He nods, a look of pure misery on his face. They're always summoning the damn things. 
but last week they lost control of a handful. Before we knew what was happening, they were running wild in our living room. We tried to protect ourselves, but we were no match for them. He shakes his head, a haunted look in his eyes. We had no choice but to leave everything behind. We've been scraping by down here ever since. Franz takes a moment to collect himself. When he speaks again, he sounds more composed. At least Janet is letting us use her Matrix uplink. We can still afford to feed ourselves thanks to her. Um... If there are, are if there are uncontrolled spirit slews up there, someone needs to deal with them. Might as well be us. Franz's face lights up in ex excitement. Oh, thank you, thank you. Please let us know when it's safe to return home. And we got the optional objective of clear the spirits out of the third floor apartments. Let's do that. We might as well. And we're going to find out they're holograms by Apex rather than actual spirits. Although that would be kind of weird considering... The Magnificers are clearly mages, so it's one of those situations where they would have to be fooled themselves to think that they're summoning spirits and instead of are just summoning holograms, you know what I mean? And uh, there it is, the, the, the game took control of my character, and my <laughs> movement thing is still there, that's weird. A middle-aged woman with chocolate-skinned... That's it's not... So chocolate-colored skin and shoulder-length dreadlocks looks up from her PDA with a start. She's decked out in form-fit body armor, and in a flash, her assault rifle goes from slung to held at the ready. Who the hell are you? And how did you get through the door? I... Uh... That's... Which door? The door was not there. That door was open. No, no, it wasn't. I just opened it. But obviously, she's not talking about that door. She's talking about the main door, which might mean that she is... Oh, Janet. We were introduced to her, weren't we? She's the leader of the... Ar of the Ar No, she can't be the leader of the Arbiters. She must be the leader of the Magnificers. No Magnificers were blocking my passage to get here. Let's go with this last one, because it's funny. I used my charm and natural musk. Gets him every time. She gestures with her rifle. Cut the shit and start talking. What do you want and why are you here? Uh, yeah, Parson sent me. He wants his hardware back. She shakes her head violently. No way! Those parts are keeping us online. And not just us, but everyone worth a new yen in this hole. Parson can keep running his ridiculous little cult just fine with, that, with what he's got. But us, we're the only Matrix connection that these people have. And that is where... Our choice comes in in regards to their cult. I knew it. I knew it. They were setting it up in a very specific way. They, they had to, you know, have some comeuppance for it because it's the, you know, it's just basic storytelling devices. Uh, I don't have time for this. I need those parts right now. I don't want this to get messy. So back down. Not going to happen. She aims her rifle at you for emphasis. Uh... Take a look at me. You know how this ends. Hardware can be replaced. But you can't. She looks you up and down, and you can see the doubt growing in her eyes. Finally, her shoulders slump in defeat. She lowers her gun and signals the others in the room to stand down. Fine, you win, asshole. Take him. The terminal's in the back room. You did the right thing. You saved lives. Screw you. Take your parts and get the hell out of my apartment. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that's... We are just supposed to... Yeah. Okay, so there was no choice. I wish there were. I wish there were... I mean, maybe there is another choice, but it's just, like, more on a meta level. In that dialogue, there was no choice. I always had to take her parts from her. But I kind of don't want to. There's probably another way of getting down there. Maybe just siding with the magickers, and I don't need the parts, because they... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. What do we have? The hacker's terminal has clearly been cobbled together with uh, using whatever parts they could find. In spite of this, it's a remarkably impressive piece of, mach of machinery. Studying the terminal, it takes almost no time to identify the components that Parsons sent you to find. Um, maybe I'm going to be able to do something here, though. Examine the terminal to see if the signal converter can be removed without disabling it. 
At the moment, it's impossible to remove the part without disabling the terminal. The converter is required so that the signal the terminal sends can be interpreted by the data jack of its user. Well, but uh, my teammate here knows a little bit more of this. The converter is a pretty specialized piece of hardware, but a data jack impulse transmitter is a widely available piece of equipment and could be converted to work in its place. A data jack uses... I mean, it makes sense. It uses an impulse, which is a fancy word for pulse. Um, also, pulse is a fancy word for fluctuation of current. <laughs> we were talking about technical terms. That means... This is weird. I don't... This means that it's like a, a headphone jack, or a, more appropriately, a guitar uh, amp uh, plug or something. Like, a you know, the big 6.5mm jacks rather than the 3.5 is it six, six and a half? I, don't, I actually don't know what the measure is. The bigger ones. If you've ever seen one of the bigger uh, headphone jacks, that they're, they're not, you know, they're not small. They're big. Uh, you know, the, the big beefy ones that are used for instrument uh, cables and other things. Um, but yeah, because those are impulses for sure. And you don't say impulse for a, for a, a binary signal. A binary signal doesn't matter. The impulse itself is irrelevant. The, it, what I mean by that is the intensity of the pulse is irrelevant. As long as, you know, because it goes up and down. That's what makes it binary, and so it's a frequency. That digital is frequency, and and uh, and uh, the impulse is also frequency, but it's a mixture of all, all the things. That's kind of funny. It also makes total sense, to be fair, because it's uh, you know it's an old setting. This is from the 70s. The the whole the whole shadow run setting. Um, but uh, that's really cool. You're basically plugging a. Uh, I, I just can't picture. Uh, I can't stop picturing the uh, the data jack that goes into your eye. That's just so cool. If I ever play. Shadowrun in a tabletop, my character will be a, a Decker, and I'll definitely have a, a one of those data jacks in my eye, because that's just, just, just cool. That's just fantastic. I love it. <laughs> oh, boy. Either way, um, technical terms, technical details. I have four Magnificar amulets, and I think... Uh, I, I, did I actually read that last line? Because I might have not. If not, it's... I didn't read it all, because I got... We did the thing. It's as long as... As soon as we... Wait, I probably should pay attention to that, because I don't think I took it. Ah. Anyway, we're out of time for the day, so I'm gonna reread that line. Uh, I'm gonna look at the footage, and uh, I'm gonna see what I can do about that, because there might be a secondary way of doing that. The option might be not in the dialogue, but in the way we approach it. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Shadowrun Dragonfall. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching and for bearing with me uh, in on these rambles, uh, and uh, I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.